My name's Andy Miles and this represents the beginning of a journey. It's a journey I've made a number of times before to my old hometown where I lived as a kid. A very picturesque place called Malvern in Worcestershire in the United Kingdom where I live. But the difference will be that this time I shall be driving a brand new Nissan Leaf 2018 model with a 40 kilowatt hour battery uh, which is supposed to have a range of about 150 miles and the purpose of this journey will be to test out the car and see exactly how it behaves. So it's one thing to read all the manuals and press releases and say well this car does this and does this and does this but only when you actually drive it can you see exactly how it is as a car on the road. The first thing with an EV, uh, any journey you're going to make, is to check out the route and uh, it's also need to see where the chargers are available. Now theoretically I might not be needing chargers too much with such a long range um, but that we'll find out as well. So it's just as well to know where they all are. <laughs> so when, uh, when I do need a charger then I know where to find one. So that'll be our next job. Right, so we're going to just check the route now. Ecotricity map showing all the chargers. We start off here in Nottingham and we come down this road here until we get to the M1 and we come down the M1 a short way there's a charger there if you really need it, but we shouldn't buy that at that point. And then we, we hit the A42 and we come down the A42 until that becomes the M42. And there's another charger there. That one's Tamworth Services. We shan't need that, I wouldn't think. That's good nice there. There's the M42 and it cuts across to the west now and there's another charger Hopwood Park Services so that's another one we can use and the M42 carries on down where it joins the M5 so the M5 goes from the south up to the north and we're going south on the M5 now and we keep on the M5 until just near Worcester. You can see Malvern. But anyway, there we are. I think we're going to be fine on chargers by the looks of it. And quite a simple route. So. Morning Andy, thanks for coming to see our new leaf. This is it here. So you can see there's a new design, much different to the previous one. And I'll just walk you around the car. So you can see these are the wheels that are standard on the Tecna, the alloy wheels looks really good in the black. I'll start off with a boot to show you that area. It's a five-door car, only comes in a five-door. So you've got loads of space in the back here. You'll see this Tecna is fitted with the Bose sound system as well. And it comes with two leads. So you've got your normal three-pin plug charging point here. And a second cable over here. And that's got the two connectors, so one goes into your charging point and one goes straight into the car. So Andy, as you can see, there's loads of room in the back seats for your passengers. And this one has the full leather upholstery. And dash area and so on. I'll show you around the controls. Yeah. So I'm going to show you the major features of the vehicle, Andy, that you'll be driving. And some of the things that you'll find useful as you're travelling along. Obviously you can see the dash area here to switch on with this button down here. Think of it as an automatic, although it doesn't have any gears. So you've got two pedals at the bottom of the, at the, bottom of the footwell here. One is obviously the accelerator, and the other one obviously the brake. This, OK. Right. So this is the satellite navigation screen, Andy. And you'll see as I put the vehicle into reverse, it's also your parking view monitor. So this car is fitted with the all-round view monitor. So basically there are four cameras around the vehicle. Take another one. Two under each of the wing mirrors, one at the front and one at the back. So this image here that you can see is all forward pictures condensed to one as if you're looking above the car, so from a bird's eye view. 
And this side here will still show you the direction in which you're maneuvering. You've got D, which is obviously the drive mode that we're in. And this is our gear stick down here, or our almost like a joystick if you like. So I'm going to put this straight into our B mode, which is the regenerative braking. And you can see that here on the dashboard, that will change to B. So as you de-accelerate or brake, the car will pick up a bit of charge from that. So this one, I don't know if you can see that from there, can you? You've got 99% charge and 147 miles. This mileage will change as the vehicle becomes calibrated to the individual's driving. Mine is, of course, used for lots of test drives. So it would probably read more than that if I was um, doing an economical drive myself. So you can see here also that the e-pedal is off, or I can put it on. Right? See this, right. okay. So can you see there where it says e-pedal? That, that indicates that you are now driving in e-pedal mode. That doesn't mean that both pedals are disabled, or you've only got one. Right, so that means when you take your foot off the accelerator pedal, that the brakes come up. Exactly. Yeah, right. So it's, it's much stronger than the regenerative braking. Um, but works on a similar basis. So as you decelerate, the car will brake, and you'll feel it braking. Right. Um, if you want to do an emergency stop or come up to a junction, you'll probably need to use the brake as well, anyway. Yeah. 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 So it's not to be relied on. It's just there as an aid. Yeah. Um, you've also got eco mode down here. So that's the eco mode button. Yeah. That, that saves the, the battery for rain. Is that it? Yeah. Basically, it gives you less less chance of accelerating fast and hard. Yeah. So again, it feels a little bit like that regenerative braking where you haven't got the same thrust that you would normally have in standard drive mode. Right, right. The important yeah. things over here are this is the pro, the pro pilot button. So if I push that, you can then see on the screen details for the cruise control, basically here. Yeah. And you'll also see things like the steering wheel and the distance. That, that car there is showing the distance you want to be away from the vehicle in front of you. Right. Um, so when you're putting the vehicle into the pro pilot mode, um, it'll ask you obviously to set a speed, which uh, move a speed up and or down using yeah. the plus or minus. Yeah, exactly. Is that how it goes? Right, I get it yeah. now. Yeah. So uh, let's yeah. say you want to set the pro pilot, Andy. So this button here on the steering wheel will set you in the right mode. You can then decide what speed you want to be going at based on obviously the traffic you're following. Put that into set for example. So that says at the moment I'd like the car to be driving at 20 miles an hour and I'd like to stay clear of the foot cars in front of course and that sets the cruise control. If we want to go any faster to keep up with the traffic. Right so as you can see I've currently got it set for 20 miles an hour which I'm exceeding at the moment. So you can see now where it's increasing. The so speed. now it's allowed to go faster. That's it. So yeah. I've now taken my foot off the accelerator, and you can see that the car's going to cruise now. As right, it's on cruise mode, hour. right, yeah. holding it at that speed. That's right. It needs to be going a bit faster on a sort of continuous route, really, for it to do uh, for it to do its job properly. Right, so let's see if I can show you how this works. As you can see, we're currently set at 20 miles an hour. I'll just increase the miles per hour slightly, and you can see we're in cruise mode, and the car is now, in effect, accelerating itself. My foot's off the accelerator. The road isn't clear, clear enough marked here for the steering control to take place. Right. But if it were, this steering wheel sign here would go green, uh -huh. and basically the vehicle would indicate, or would be nudging me, if you like, right. gently towards the direction it wants me to go in to keep, keep within them. Keep the you in the middle there. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll just Quite impressive, really, isn't it? It's very clever. Uh, yeah. It feels a bit weird to start with using things like that, yeah. Because you, you get the impression that it has got a slight grip on you, uh, on the steering wheel. Right. But certainly not enough to either take you off course, or for you not to be able to correct your steering yeah, yourself. Yeah, just kind of like a feedback mechanism, really. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so I'll just pull it nudges you in, nudges you in the right, That's right. <laughs> direction. So I'll just turn around up here. Once you're on the uh, motorway or a dual carriageway, you'll get a much better impression of that. You see now the vehicle is cruising at 29 miles an hour. <coughs> mm, I'm not accelerating at all. And if there were a vehicle in front of us, the car would slow down or speed up to keep that same speed, dependent on the vehicle in front. Right. And they won't put the steering wheel sign on for that uh, gentle steering direction. 
at this sort of speed. Yeah, well, that's, that's how it should be really, isn't it? The, the driver in control. So this is now slowing the vehicle down because it loses yeah. the car in front of us. We'll take instruction from the vehicles around you, obviously. And again, it's slowing the vehicle down because the car in front of us is slowing as well. You can see that in here. All oh, right, right. So that's that's the distance it wants. Yeah. So it's just. And again, it's doing the same thing there. So I'm not doing any of this braking. So it did all that itself. All that itself. Excellent. All right. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I think that's quite a good demonstration. Okay. So here we are at the beginning of the journey, up in Nottingham at the uh, Sandy Cliff Nissan showrooms. Uh, the people who have kindly lent the car to us for this little adventure. So this is where we start. Um, so uh, this car is really easy to drive on the motorway. Uh, as Annie showed us in the demonstration, you just have to press the uh, autopilot button, the little blue button. And then after that, you've just got the, uh, the plus and minus where you can set your, um, <coughs> your speed to what you want, so you set it to something like 65 and then uh, you take your foot off the accelerator and it just keeps to either that speed or it'll just follow the vehicle in front and slow and accelerate to keep up with it. Uh, and then of course the, uh, at the same time the autopilot is doing the steering to keep you in between the white lines so you don't even have to sort of worry about steering particularly. It won't let you take your hand off the wheel <laughs> it makes really loud beeping if you take your hand off the wheel so there's no chance of sitting in the wrong seat like some of these Tesla drivers it's very much a driver assistance not pretending to be any kind of uh, replacement for the driver so you, you've got the steering you've got this, the distance uh, that it's holding and um, that distance can be set with another little button just just on the same stalk uh, which sets it to three positions either three, two or one sort of bar and uh, the number one bar which we're on at the moment is still a respectable distance from the vehicle in front so really I'm not having to do anything at the moment I'm just sitting here and uh, the vehicle is more or less driving itself so it's very relaxing on the motorway. So we're just coming into uh, Tamworth Services at the moment. We don't actually need to stop here to charge. We've still got 138 miles of range left and we've only got uh, about 57 miles to go. But I thought I could do with a break. So we're coming in here to have one. stop at uh, Hopwood, Hopwood Park Services and anyway this shows the uh, nonsense about the idea of electric cars having insufficient range because uh, this is a place where I've charged up many a time uh, with my other car which has rather less range. This one has a 150 mile range but I've stopped twice now uh, and both times I could have charged if I'd wanted to. <laughs> uh, it's slightly more convenient not to have to actually plug it in, but only a small difference really. So, uh, I mean, I could have done this journey with a car which had a lot uh, less range. I've had two opportunities to plug in and charge up, but haven't taken them because I'm saving up. <laughs> the charge just to show how far it'll go without one.
Malvern now at this little cafe on the hill and uh, I've chosen this because there is some uh, level 2 charging which I've just plugged into which will uh, it's be interesting to see what, what's added to the capacity in the short time we're here. Not very much I wouldn't think but uh, at least we know what we can do by way of uh, level 2 charging. Right, so we're on the home journey now. I've just uh, finished doing some level 2 charging and uh, we're now heading for the level 3 charging. Hopwood Park Services to charge up with the Chadamo charge of the level 3 and uh, in actual fact there was no need to stop at all we had enough on level 2 charge to get all the way home but um, as it's part of the test run to see what the level 2 charging is like and how long it takes to charge up uh, we're giving it a go so uh, it's on 51% at the moment, so that's enough for about uh, 75 miles or so. Um, we've, we've not got very far to go at all. So we're back from our little adventure in Malvern. Um, but that wasn't the purpose of it, of course. That was a kind of uh, sideline to have, have an enjoyable day out. Um, uh, but the, the main purpose was to do the road test for the Nissan Leaf 2018 model. So what's the verdict on it? Well, overall, uh, I can only say excellent, very good indeed. Um, there was the, uh, the Pro Pilot, the autopilot system was extremely simple to use. They just had to, like Addy showed us on the demonstration, just have to press the little purple button and then set the speed uh, for your maximum speed you want to go at and um, set the the bars to three two or one between yourself and the car in front so even at uh, level one it was quite a respectable distance quite a safe distance and when I was driving down the motorway uh, you know it, it, it kept the distance from the car in front, just like you were joined on with a tow bar or something. You know, it was, it was quite uh, in reassuring, shall I say. You know, like it, you didn't have to worry about it. it. You just knew that the car would keep the distance. And then there was the steering. Um, you you would just hold your hands lightly on the steering wheel, and then you could feel the steering wheel moving uh, underneath your hands. So you the car would steer itself, but not in a very forceful way. I mean, if you wanted to override it, you, you could. Uh, but it just creates this little kind of nudge that you could feel, like in the steering wheel, like a feedback mechanism almost, like a, that kept you on the straight and narrow in between those sort of railroad tracks of, of the lane markings. So that you'd always be in the, in the middle of the lane and you didn't have to worry about it. And so, with Pro Pilot on, it was extremely relaxing way of driving on the motorway. You know, I take my feet off the pedals, just hold lightly with my hands, and then that would be it. It's almost like being a, a passenger over just be driving itself. Uh, now, it wouldn't let you take your hands off the wheel. As soon as you did, there'd be a warning triangle would come up and it would start beeping at you uh, louder and louder. And my understanding is that if if you left your hand off altogether, it would eventually come to a stop. Um, so, and not let you carry on like that. So it's, it's, it's very safe. I mean, there, there have been incidents, haven't there, where Tesla drivers have sat in the passenger seats and, uh, as, if, as if they've got an autonomous system when it's only meant to be uh, driver assist that's all it's meant to be and this system is very clear uh, in its intention 
you know, it won't let you take your hands off the wheel. Uh, it's very much just driver assist, so you don't get lulled into that false sense that this is some kind of autonomous system. It's just helping you and making life easier, and that's a lot safer, I think. So I, I think the, that's a very successful system that they've set up there and very simple and easy to use. Now then there's the e-pedal which is um, uh, a unique feature of the LEAF. Uh, no other electric vehicle has the e-pedal. Now I'm used to driving my own electric car and I always really only ever drive with the, the accelerator pedal. Uh, when I want to slow down and take my foot off and the regenerative braking slows the car down just as if you put the brake on. And I only use the brake really when I've come to a dead stop, uh, you know, at a junction or in a traffic queue. So I'm used to that. But the e-pedal takes it one step further so that when you take your foot off, all the way off, uh, it starts to apply the brakes, you know, so that you're actually slowing down very quickly indeed. So you can control your speed all the way down to an absolute stop just with the uh, accelerator pedal only. Um, that makes driving uh, even better, even easier. And, uh, you know, that's a, a feature I can, another feature that I can recommend and say is very good. And any time it's not so good um, is if you're driving at a very slow speed, say manoeuvring in a car park or something like that. Because every time you take your foot off the accelerator, um, the brake is actually on, so uh, then the brake has to come off for you to move again. So that makes it slightly less smooth and progressive when you're trying to move very slowly. So I think when you're trying to manoeuvre very slowly, you're better off without the e-pedal. But that's about the only time, really. Um, the, it doesn't actually have a handbrake, as such. there's no handbrake lever in the car. There's the, you can put it in park by pressing the park button. And the... Um, it is interesting that, uh, you know, just like the original horseless carriage, that you see pictures of the horseless carriage, it looked just like a carriage without the horse, didn't it? You know, like, because that's where people's heads were at, their concept of a, a carriage was something that looked just like something that was driven by a horse, but it had an engine in it, uh, but not the horse, you know, but it, appearance wise, it looked just like a carriage. So it it takes a long time for something uh, to evolve towards being purely what it is. So like I have a car today has evolved to be what it is today. You know, getting rid of the, the mud guards and incorporating them into the bodywork. And uh, there's no sort of big domed headlights like they used to be on old cars. They're all incorporated into the bodywork. and Everything has come that way. But when it comes to the... Um, selector for an electric car. It looks just like an automatic selector on a lot of cars. It uh, looks like a gear lever and you know it's got uh, park, reverse, neutral, drive uh, and works pretty much like a gear selector. But th this one is evolving forward from that. So the, it's in the same place as you might expect and it's got the same three positions uh, but it's rather obviously not a gear selector. It's a it's a sort of fancy switch type of thing that moves. Uh, mm, it's very squat and it kind of roll, rocks rather than like a lever. It's more like a sort of uh, dome-shaped, ball-shaped thing that kind of rocks. <laughs> and it, it, it does the same thing. You, know, you move it, you know, re reverse, neutral, drive. And, then, um, and it's also got the B position, which gives you more... Uh, uh, regenerative braking. Um, so you've got those choices and you've also got the, if you remember Annie's demonstration at the beginning of the video, she showed you the green button, the eco button that you can press, which modifies the drive further so that uh, it reduces the acceleration and the regenerative braking. Everything uh, set to give you the best range out of your vehicle. So I didn't actually use that particularly, I, I, because I was using the, uh, the autopilot system and the e-pedal and I was driving on the motorway, I, I didn't ever really try that one out, I must, must admit. Um, but that's, that's there as something you can use. So you've got lots of choices, that's the point anyway. <laughs> you've got lots of choices. And um, the style of the thing is, 
it's really quite nice. Uh, some people didn't like the original leaf, but uh, it seems a perfectly reasonable car to me. But it it, it looks like quite a, a modern, stylish car, just like any other car on the on the road. You know, no one would sort of look at it and think that looks weird. <laughs> they look at it and think, oh, that looks a nice car. You know, the alloy wheels and everything, and it's got these rather fancy. Uh, Ooh, uh, sort of hologram type effect on the on the radiator. What would be the radiator grill is sort of solid, but it's got like a, a semi-transparent <laughs> appearance with these shimmering uh, sort of hologram effects in it that look rather stylish. So it, it looks it looks rather good, I thought. Uh, and um, and in fact, uh, you know, the general comfort and feel of the car was was in the good as well. It, like my little car is a, a four-seater car, it's very lightweight and uh, it tends to get blown about in the wind a bit and uneven roads tend to sort of throw it about a bit as well but it, I mean it holds the road very well, I can go quite fast around the corners and everything um, because it's got all electric cars tend to have a low centre of gravity with all the weight uh, just level with the axles you know, so that you can You've got a very good centre of gravity on electric cars, but this one uh, was very sure-footed. You know, it's a much, it's a much bigger, full-size family car, and it's uh, got a heavier sort of feel to it. So it sits very firmly and safely on the road. There's no feel of it being thrown about. You're very much in control of it, and the uh, power steering is very smooth and light, and. You feel really 100% in control of the car all of the time, and uh, the ride is comfortable. Uh, it's firm enough to hold the road, but comfortable enough to absorb the bumps. Uh, and of course, being electric, it's very quiet. You know, it's like driving in the old sort of Rolls Royce type style. You know, where you don't hear anything from the engine because there isn't an engine for this. <laughs> so it just uh, glides along in the. Uh, very pleasant for conversations or listening to music. You know, you haven't got all that row of the engine uh, drumming in your ears. Um, so it's very uh, roomy. I'm six foot two inches tall, so headroom is important for me. And I did. I must admit, I didn't even notice uh, some cars I get in. I could feel my hair brushing against the roof. Whereas this one, I felt I've got plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom. It felt very comfortable. Uh, plenty of room in it. Um, uh, you know, it's one of the most comfortable cars I've I've driven in really. And it's got all sorts of uh, additions, you know, like uh, heated steering wheel, heated seats for the winter. And it's also got uh, a heat pump, which is important because if you've got thermal heating, then that really uh, takes a lot out of your battery so that during the winter, uh, like I've got thermal heating in my car, I tend to not bother with the heater, even in the winter I just use the electric seats and driving gloves <laughs> and uh, keep warm that way. Because if I put the heater on, uh, it really kills the range if I've got any distance to do. But here you don't have to worry about that because the car's got a huge range anyway and with the heat pump it doesn't take much out of it. And That leads nicely on to the, the bit about range anyway because um, it was claiming 150 miles of range, and I was a bit sceptical. Generally, whatever whatever is claimed about motor cars, you get less, don't you? you know, like miles per gallon and all that kind of thing. It's always less that you actually end up with. But uh, what I noticed when I was going halfway down the motorway system was uh, we were down. Uh, the battery was down to 50 percent, but the uh, the calculator, which calculates range based on how far you've got on uh, you know what what battery you've used so far was saying 101 miles so that would mean that driving in the same conditions from a, a fully charged battery I'd have a range of over 200 miles so that's a, a lot better than the 150 miles so when I was looking at the map at the beginning looking at all the charges thinking, oh, I might need that one, I might need that one in actual fact I could uh, by the looks of it have done the entire journey there and back again without charging at all, uh, just charging it uh, when I got home. And as it was, I did charge at the uh, destination, the little cafe at Malvern, and that put on, uh, it was 
100% uh, when I got there and the battery charged up in the brief period I was there, about an hour. You know, I just had a cup of tea and a bite to eat and I went for a walk up on the hills for some fresh air, stretched my legs. And it's very beautiful up there anyway, blue skies and green hills and trees and things. And looking out across the valley and, you know, you're about 800 feet up, so you get a marvellous view from there. Anyway, that, uh, getting back to the, the car, I was only there for an hour or so and it, it went from 45% up to about just over 70%, I think it was. Um, so it, it put on, uh, in that brief hour, about 50 miles of motoring. So that's very good rate of charge on level 2 charging. So there again, um, I could have quite comfortably, I, well, I could have just scraped by without charging at all. I could have very comfortably charged just there on level 2 without any... Uh, motorway charging at all but as it was I decided we would stop on the way back to try out the level 3 charging just to see how it went and um, there again it charged up very quickly um, only 25 minutes I was there and uh, it it added I went up to 85% in that 25 minutes uh, so that was uh, you know about the same in terms of percentage as my own little car but my little car has a 16 kilowatt hour battery and this has a 40 kilowatt hour battery so um, that's about two and a half times the size <laughs> of my battery so to do the same percentage uh, or even more a higher percentage of charge in the same time means it's actually charging two and a half times faster than my little car so it, it's got the range and it charges very quickly when you do need to stop. So that means that you know you could stop, get a good level of recharge back on, and you've got a, another huge range. So you could go very long distances without having to stop too many times. And as I said uh, earlier on in the video, I stopped twice anyway. You know, so I could have plugged in those times. Uh, so you know the range is not an issue at all. Uh, that, that's something. For everyone to note, range is not an issue. Um, and the the controls that I've already mentioned to some extent, well, there's one um, little hiccup we had on the way where the, <laughs> the satellite navigation system that I've been using for years now uh, suddenly decided to die on me about halfway, <laughs> halfway along, which was quite, uh, a bit of a panic moment because, uh, you know, I... There was there's a satellite navigation in the car, but I, my thought was well, it won't be as good. It won't. I won't know how to operate it. But it, in actual fact, I managed to get the address from my smartphone where we were going, and it was very easy to put the address in. And uh, the actual inbuilt satellite navigation was just as good as the one I I'd, I'd got, and um, or didn't have any more. As, uh, in actual fact, um, it was just as good. Uh, it had a nice big screen, which was the the screen you've seen on the video. Um, so I could see it very well, and it was in a position where I could glance at it without... Uh, it wasn't obstructing the view from the window, and it was quick in front of me to glance at it when necessary. And of course the, uh, the voice came through the sound system, so it was a very clear voice, very easy to hear, because I'm a bit hard of hearing uh, in my old age. So um, I do need something that I can hear clearly. So all the instructions were very good and it uh, gave me plenty of warning of everything that was coming up and I, I got to Malvern very well with that. So that's uh, one example of where what's on board is very competent and good. And then another little hiccup <laughs> when I got there, I realised that I'd forgotten to ask uh, Annie uh, about how to open the charging flap. So when I got there, another moment of panic. <laughs> I, do, I didn't know how to open the charging flap. I tried pressing it and I looked all around for levers, like mine has got like a petrol flap and you pull a lever. Uh, so I thought must be a lever somewhere, there's nothing. And then I looked around on the dashboard and there was one button that had like a, a petrol pump uh, sort of symbol. And I thought, oh, well, that, that must be what I need to use. So I pressed that and lo and behold, there it was. And then at the other end, coming back, 
I couldn't get the plugs out. Um, they were locked in, which is quite a good feature, I suppose, that no one can mess about with your plug while you're away. Uh, and again, the same button unlocked the uh, the plug. So, so all, all I'm saying really is that everything I had to do on the car, even though I didn't necessarily know in any detail what to do or, or at all in that case, it was very intuitive to find out what to do and I was able to control everything uh, and everything was fairly simple and in a small space. You, know, you didn't have to look too far to find what, what you wanted. So the controls were good, uh, the ride quality was good and then um, there was the, the one other item is the acceleration. As we all know electric cars have smooth strong acceleration from the start, no gears, no jerking through the gears. It's all one smooth powerful sweep away when you want to go and it generally leaves other cars standing at the traffic lights while you're shooshing off down the road. Well this one was quite phenomenal, the Nissan Leaf acceleration is quite phenomenal. <laughs> um, there was this one incident in Malvern where there's a wide junction you, you come in to off the hill and you come in quite, it's quite a steep wide junction and the, the main road that you're coming into, when you try to look down it, you can't see down it because there's also a stone wall in the way and you have to kind of creep forward slowly in the hope that nothing's going to come and then and then go when it's safe to do so. Well I got just to the point where it was too late to go back and forward was the only way and there was a car bearing down on me. Well I put my foot on the accelerator, there was a squeal of squeal of tyres, you know, like a dragster or something, <laughs> uh, thrown back in the seat and before I knew it I was about a hundred yards down the road, you know, I've never, I've never experienced acceleration like it, it was, it was sort of uh, almost frightening because it was so unexpected, I mean I guess you'd be used to it if you actually uh, drove the car every day, but this was the first day I'd driven it. <laughs> it was quite a shock to me at, at the time. I, I was expecting an electric car to accelerate quite fast, but this was quite a frightening acceleration. So I, most of the time I was driving uh, in the kind of chauffeur style nice and sedate and gentlemanly, um, making sure that we got the range we wanted, uh, not, not going too hectic anywhere. But, the, but on that one occasion I was glad we had the acceleration. So, uh, so I think that's covered everything about the car, you know, the, it was just, in all aspects, it was an excellent car and I can thoroughly recommend it to anyone. If, if, if anyone out there is in the market for a car, looking for a new car, then I would say that this was one of the best cars on the road today that you can buy with everything that it's got and, of course, being an electric car is so much more it's just such a better driving experience in an electric car than a conventional car. Uh, I had to drive a conventional car a while back and it was really hard work, I can tell you, <laughs> uh, compared to the electric. So and it's got the Pro Pilot, the E-Pedal, everything going for it. It's, it's got a wonderfully good range, more than it's even stating. I would su suggest that the 150 is what you'd get around town when you're having to stop and start, stop and start. So on motorway journeys where, you want, where you're worried about range, on the motorway journeys, uh, you're going to get, you know, 200 miles out of it, as long as you're not actually sort of bombing along at uh, above the speed limit. That is, of course, if you stick the speed limit uh, and you, you go nicely and comfortably, which is what it, what it seems to get you into, because it's such a relaxed way of driving with the Pro Pilot. Uh, then you'll get that 200 mile range quite easily, and uh, so you won't have to keep stop stopping to charge or worrying too much about the charge as long as you've identified where you can stop. So yeah, brilliant car and uh, it's a lot cheaper than a, a Tesla Model 3 which you can't even get yet. It's, this car is there in the showrooms waiting for people to buy it. Um, so I, I, I can't really think of a better car that you could buy for the price really. Uh, a, brilliant, a brilliant car and I thoroughly enjoy driving it so I can recommend it to anyone. Thank you very much.